second day, 68. It's funny people gambling all the time. 24 hours a day, they're laying out money. Dogs, horses, roulette, bingo, cards. It's funny, really. They enjoy it all right. I don't go in for it much myself. Well, I've got me wine making. I make all sorts of wine. I mean, you can make wine out of nearly anything, as long as there's sugar and yeast there. I mean, I've done apricot wine and plum wine. Oranges you can do it out of. Ah, oh, there's the wife, old Carol. She does the pools. And she spends her time dreaming about all the things she's going to buy that she's seen in her magazines when she wins. Uh, if she wins. Then there's Bingo. My old auntie goes down there three, four times a week. Seems to live down there. She actually lives on her own and all her friends go down there, so I suppose it's natural, really. Well, keeps her out of trouble. Now, you take horse racing. We've got this mate, Steve, and I reckon that he works harder at the form than I do down the factory. I mean, he always goes to the races, and if he don't do that, he goes down to betting shop. Five and a half, come aboard. Come aboard, 20 shillings to five. Come aboard, number five. Thank you. When that's over, he comes round to see us. Yeah, come on in, mate. Right. Here, Carol. Shh, shh, shh. Close your eyes. Hello, Steve. Guess what I've got in my right hand. Come on, quick, three guesses. Number one, come on. You're at. No. Number two. <sighs> Bottle of beer? <laughs> no, number three. Come on, guess what I've got in my right hand. Your right foot? No. Oh, well, I don't know. What is it? Yeah, look at that. Isn't that nice? Chocolate. Yes. <laughs> hey. You're on a diet, isn't it? Oh, no. Uh, look here, what have we got in here, then? Uh, for you, a bottle of scotch. And oh, for you, Stevie. some cigars. And for oh. Madame, her favourite perfume. Perfume? Oh, it's just like Christmas, isn't it? Blimey, this is expensive stuff. And for all of us, a bottle of champagne. Come on, lad, hurry up and get the glasses. Oh, and that champagne, please. Yeah. All right then, Stevie, what are we celebrating, eh? My mother got run over by a bus. She what? left. Oh, she did. It was absolutely terrible. Absolutely awful. My grandma was driving at the time, 83. She, she's much too old to work for the corporation, you know. He's having his son. Oh, it was absolutely terrible. So My mother's head came right off and was lying there in the gutter, <laughs> bleeding all down the grid. Oh, oh it was terrible. Out. The whole family's in mourning, you know. Wait. Yeah, all going to the funeral in black. I'm going to go in a transparent oh, bathing here costume. Are. Here we go, my darlings. <laughs> oh, isn't that lovely? Hey, I hope you like champagne, by the way. <laughs> We are Carol, that one's there for you. Are. Thank you. For me. Go on in. Cheers! Cheers! Cheers. <laughs> what is this lovely? Yeah. <laughs> well, go on then. What have you done? Rob the bank? <laughs> Three o'clock. Sandown Park. Oh, he's been to the races. Of course. Melody Blues was the name of the horse. 16 to 1. Came in first. Guess how much I had on him. Go on, guess, guess, guess. Oh, I don't know, fiver? 30 quid. Never. I did, I did, 30 quid. How much is that? Go on, how much is it? 30 times 16, uh, how much, uh, how much? Quick. Uh, four, four. 480 quid, correct, sir. Oh, go on, you big fibber, you never. I'm not a fibber, I'm telling the truth. Hey, look, listen, look. I'm not trying to show off, but let me tell you the story of the race, because it's the most fantastic day of my life. <laughs> Melody Blues was the name of the horse, right? Right. Six to one. 16 to 1, sorry. Right. Came in first. Right. I've had my eye on this horse now for about three months. He's a marvellous horse. Wonderful horse. He keeps on going all the time. Lots of courage, lots of go. Marvellous beast. Now then, today, he was racing in a three-mile race, all right? For the last few weeks, he's been racing two miles, two and a half miles. Well, it's not far enough for him, son. Today, three-mile race, heavy going, 16 to 1. I thought, well, you can't lose, can you? So I shot 30 uh -huh. quid on him, and he came in first, didn't he? Came in first, Ooh. 16 to 1, and your Uncle Stevie won 480 pounds. Uh -huh. <laughs> Look, I'll tell you something. When you get a run, like I've had now, when you're reading everything right, you get the most 
most marvellous physical sensation. <laughs> no, I can't tell you. Honestly, it's absolutely unbelievable. Look at everything go No, uh, listen. <laughs> Your hands start to tremble. Your knees start to go. You know what I mean? You, uh, you get those butterflies in the pit of your stomach. And up your back. You get those little mice running down, up and down your back. So you get the pictures, you know, when you see Vincent Price. Oh, it's absolutely unbelievable. And you start to tremble all over. It's absolutely magnificent, you know. You become almost clairvoyant. You know clairvoyant? I mean? Oh, yes, you can see yeah, things. Jerry you can, no, you can see everything. You feel as if you're a cloud, you know. And you feel as if you go to a race course, you can just pick them out. No trouble at all. You can see everything. You know, you feel, you, you feel, you feel ten feet tall. You really do. You, you, you feel... You feel absolutely on top of the world. You, you, you feel as if you can look at a race card and you can pick them out. One, two, three, four. And you read everything right. You know exactly how everything's going to work and you're on top of the world and you're going, boy. You are going and you feel magnificent. Oh, my God. I mean, you don't know what it's like, really. You don't. <laughs> But I do know what it's like. I mean, you don't have to be there at the race course or in the betting shop. Hello, I mean, you can watch it on telly. Twenty pounds, twenty. Two tellers. Thank you. It's just as thrilling. All looking anxiously across to the right, and they're off. Ron Dirtle just a little bit slowly away, but he's all right. And as they run down towards the Melling Road, it's Peace Town, Valtrex and Cullen House and Feeble on the inside. Brown Diamond over on the far side with Dark Venetian. And it's Peace Town, the leader now from Feeble on the inside. Freddy's right up there with them. Cullen House is just in behind with Ronald's Bourne as they come up to the first over to Bob Haynes. The rip is well placed up on the outside. This first one is a plain fence. Peace Town, Freddy, the rip, Volcano. Pontingo, Ned Smart, all well there. Coming nice, this next fence, the one for four beaters, and it was Peace, uh, peace Tide and Feeble together with Freddy on the inside. And Cutlet also up there, the rip on the extreme outside the field. They're heading now toward Beecher, and it's still Dark Venetian, Peace Tide, Freddy, and Feeble. They come up to Beecher's now, and it was Dark Venetian, perhaps just the leader there, and a faller were hidden by the crowd, but certainly Sizzle Art has gone. Sizzle Art, a faller, try and get the rest. Crowbeck also disappeared, and Ruby Glenn, now the fence after the water. It's Freddie for Scotland on the inside of J. Trump for America, and these two are somewhere ahead of the towering peace town with Rainbow Rattle, Rainbow Battle trying to get on turns to them. Faltrix is making ground, and so is Mr. Jones. Rainbow Battle is jumped in third, Mr. Jones is fourth, and it's still J. Trump holding Freddie as they race toward the elbow. There's another 200 yards to run, and it's J. Trump and the favorite Freddie and Freddie making ground. Yeah, it's great to watch it. I rate it more on telly than being there. Want a scotch? Oh, yeah, tar, please. What's that, oranges? Yeah. My God, you're going to kill yourself one of these days, my son. Ah. Look at that. Cheers. Cheers, tar. Got it all fixed up for tomorrow. Tomorrow what? You and me, Sandown Park. What, racing? Hmm. Oh, I can't go racing tomorrow. Why not? Well, it's Wednesday, innit? I've got to go to work. I can't go racing in the middle of the week. Give it a miss tomorrow. No, oh, I can't do that. Of course you can. Look, son, I'm not asking you to take a whole week off, you know, just half a day. Come on. Look, no, no, I can't do that. I mean, once you start, you don't know where you'll end up, do you? For God's sake, you know. Martin, you must have done it before, surely. No, well, I mean, I've had days off, yeah, but when I was sick. That's right. Hey, look, that's exactly what you do. Tomorrow morning, you go into work as usual, all right? But at 11 o'clock, you fall a bit poorly, go and see the nurse. She sends you home for the afternoon. Half past 11, you meet me down at Waterloo Station. We'll have a few drinks, get on the train out to Sandown Park, have a few more drinks, into the course, Bob's your uncle. Do yourself a favour, give yourself a treat, get out in the fresh air now and then, you know. Come on. You don't actually want to go to work, do you? Well, I mean, yeah, as, as a matter of fact, yeah, I do actually want to go to work. I mean, I like work. Oh, my God, Martin, yeah. I mean, sometimes you really give me the willies, you really do. I mean, you got to work every day, don't you? I mean, work is work, but the races... Oh, my God, that's much more exciting, isn't it? 
You know what it's like down there, don't you? You know, the money. Yeah. The, s the smell. You know, it's just like Wembley, the cup final day, isn't it? You... Tell you what, son. Tell you what. Great card tomorrow. Fantastic card tomorrow. Unbelievable. You know the way I'm going right now, don't you? The way I'm picking them out and seeing it all the way down the line. Got a great horse for you tomorrow. Six to one. As you like it. Can't lose, mate, I promise you. As you like it, six to one. Well, look, <clears throat> as you like it, you can go racing tomorrow. As I like it, I'm gonna go to work, all right? All right, Marty. You'll be sorry. Last half far long and it's Polly Darling holding on from Cockatina and at the line it's Polly Darling the winner, a photo for second between Cockatina and Commodore. It's white, 47. People are also certain they're gonna win. They all think they're gonna be the lucky one. But what they don't realise is that they're all playing for each other's money. I mean, there's got to be all those losers in order to pay for the one winner. All these geezers think they're gonna win. And the fellas playing cards, they all think luck's on their side too. But it's all a matter of luck really, isn't it? I mean, when you think about it, the winner's taking money from all the losers. Yeah, yeah, wait a minute, though. I mean, how many winners did you actually back? None, none at all. But, I mean, you must have lost money on all the races. Yeah. I really want to know, I lost, uh, 290 quid today. 290? Yeah. Well, how can it have been a good day, then? I mean, if that had happened to me, it would have been a bad day. Oh, look, son, for you, it would have been a bad day. For me, it was a good day, right? Well, yeah, I mean, all right, but I don't understand that. Come here, Martin. I'll explain to you. Come here. I'll give you an example. All right? I had a bad day. I lost quite a bit of money. But I'll give you a good example of what it's all about. Remember that horse I was telling you about yesterday? As you like as, it. As you like it, Six yeah. to one, all right? And I said it was yeah. going to win. Yeah. All right. I have never seen a horse run so well in my life. He was absolutely magnificent. Three fences from home. He was m moving through that field like a dose of salt. Jockey had him under control, and he was going very steadily, moving his way through. Comes to the last fence. Bang. Well, he fell. No, it didn't fall at all, no. Just clipped the top of the fence. In the meantime, the second horse overtakes him and pips him at the post. What, and he come in second? He'd come in second. Yeah. By a short head. Now then, that was a fluke. That was a fluke. Oh, yeah. But you see, I read it right. I was right. I knew how that horse was going to run, and it was a fluke that he didn't win. You with me? Yeah. OK. Now, listen. When you're in a sort of lark, you know, it gets very complicated. First of all, you've got to read the race right, OK? Secondly, about 12 or 13 factors that come into play that have all got to be on your favour, all on your side. I mean, things like the state that go in, you know and uh, the horse, and the way the horse is feeling, and the jockey, and the way the jockey's feeling, and the jockey's girlfriend, and all things like that. They've all got to be working in your favour. Now, yesterday, yesterday, I was reading it right, and all those things were in my favour. Today, a few flukes, a few things went wrong, but I was still reading it right. That's the important thing. The brain's still working. Still working right. You with me? Yeah, yeah. Now then. You just wait till tomorrow. Tomorrow. I'll be right in again. Right in my favour again tomorrow. <sighs> Simple. Yeah, well, here, I'd better be off. I've got to get down to night school. No, you're not. Stay and have another drink. No, no, really. I've only got about ten minutes to get down here. No, that's pub time. Come on, have another no, drink. No, no, it's right, really. I've had enough anyway. I'd better get down here. All right, Marty. If that's the way you feel, if you've got to go, you've got to go. Well, all right then, see you, mate.
can't win all the time, or even most of the time. Here, just listen to this bloke, he'll tell you. Punters collectively must lose money because the mathematics are against them and uh, are in favour of the, of, of the bookmaker or the, or the tote, uh, as the case may be. Uh, but, uh, but that doesn't stop people betting. Uh, they, they must realise that they don't win in the long run or they're most unlikely to win in the long run. Uh, but it does provide this entertainment for them. So I don't look very hopeful on the horses. Now nah, I reckon the best chance for real wins on a premium bonds. Well, all the pools. Then again, I'm not sure if you're a big winner if you really know what to do with it when you've got it. I mean, the publicity always makes it seem great. Till it's you that actually wins. Would you like to travel? Well, I don't know. Why not? I'm not over keen, of course, I don't know what this effect will have on me. But what about a trip round the world, or a, a motor yacht, or something like that? No, thank you, no. We're, go, um, we're going to see the Wash Sister out in Canada. Mrs. Wall, is there anything you've wanted all your life which you can now buy? Not that I can think of. I've worked and uh, got what I wanted as a rule. How about you, Mr. Wall? Something special that you've always wanted to buy? No, there's nothing special. Not even a race horse. No. Wild night over, isn't it? Parsnips. Oh, it's a very clever thing at this time of the year. It's not. They're horrible. I don't like the taste of the things. Well, you don't have to eat them, do you? They all half smell horrible, too. Yeah, they're all right. Oh, you smell that. Go on. That nice? Yeah, that's really nice. Is that the stuff Steve gave you? Yeah, I bet it was ever so expensive. Yeah. Yeah, a bit of all right old Steve bringing that stuff round for us, wasn't it? Drop in the ocean compared to what he won, isn't it? Well, it still cost him a lot of money, though, doesn't it? What's he done with it all, anyway? Well, oh, I don't know. He puts it on his horses, doesn't he? Well, not all of it, surely. Well, I seen him yesterday and he'd lost 290, he said. What? Yeah, that's what he said. 290 quid? Yeah. Well, I starved. Well... Why didn't he do himself a favour and save some of it? No, I mean, he likes putting on horses, doesn't he? That's what he does oh, with it, you know? Oh, blimey. 290 quid. Think what I could have done with that. Quite I could have had that coating... Cody Cooper's window, I know. Well, yeah, I could no. have. And I could have had my teeth cut for that, couldn't I? Cool. Oh. I wish we had 75,000. Ah, you'd have to win the pools for that, love. Oh, it'd be lovely, though, wouldn't it, eh? Just think. You wouldn't have to make any more of this stupid old wine. We could buy a vineyard for that, could we? Oh, well, I don't do it for the wine. I do it because I like doing it, you know. Oh, it would be ever so lovely. Do you know what I'd do? I'd have a big house in the country. No, I wouldn't. I'd have a big house on an island somewhere. Eh? How'd I get to work, love, if we lived on an island? Eh? Don't be daft. You wouldn't have to work, would you? Oh, I wish, I wish, I wish. What do you wish, love? Everything. Now, you don't. We're all right with what we've got. We've got our parsnips, haven't we? <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> you shut up, you old parsnip bed. <laughs> <laughs> I don't reckon the gamblers see most of the money anyway. I mean, it's the blokes what run the places what get it. I mean, the bingo halls and people that own casinos and things. I bet if you asked a bookie, he'd have to admit it. I've won today, and I'm not sitting here over the moon about sitting and, oh, goody, goody, I won a lot of money today. That don't mean a thing, because tomorrow I might lose. But I know one thing. At the end of the year, I will win. And betting shops are still, are still very lucrative. I don't call them betting shops. I've got into trouble from my fellow bookmakers for calling them money factories. So I altered that. I don't call them money factories no more. I call them gold mines. All that money, and he lost it all before I spent a week's pay. I suppose it's all right once in a while. <laughs> 